There are many advances in the way in which we image tumours. Um, simply, we start off with things like chest x-ray, plain x-rays. Then later, we talk about things like ultrasound, using sound waves to image the abnormal abnormality. Then we talk, uh, talk about a CT scan, whereby we can reconstruct you know, three-dimensionally what the abnormality is. And then there's an MRI. The PET scan is a little bit different. The PET scan is different from the, all these other scans because all the other scans are looking for structural abnormalities. For example, if you look at a liver, a liver is supposed to be of a certain consistency. If we find a cyst, a bag of water in it, you can see the abnormalities in terms of the way in which the image appears. The difference between a PET scan and a CT scan is that in a PET scan, you inject a tiny amount of sugar, a little bit of glucose, that is tagged on to a radioactive substance called FDG. All right? And we know that when you have an infection or you have cancer, the, 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 the tumour or the infection needs to use up glucose. It metabolizes glucose and therefore the sugar preferentially will go to these areas and light it up and light it up like a light bulb and this has made a great deal of difference in the way in which we can study the, the, the structural as well as the metabolic activity of various uh, abnormalities like tumors and infection this is this is a picture of a of a PET machine. Okay, it looks exactly like a CT scan machine. The only difference is that it compiles both the CT images as well as the PET images. And the PET, the CT images will show you the structural, the, the structures where they are, the lung, the heart, the liver, and so on. While the PET part of it will incorporate into the CT images any areas of metabolic activity. Let me illustrate. If you look at this image, you will be able to see this is a CT scan of the pelvis. And in this CT scan, you can see all your structures. Okay? You can see these are the two bones, the pel this is the sacrum, these are the intestines inside. You can look at this CT scan and there's no way in which you can tell what the abnormality is. However, when you show the image whereby the FDG has been injected, there's an area of increased uptake and you will be able to know where the cancer is. How is this useful to us? This is useful to us in many ways. The PET scan has really revolutionized the way in which we stage cancers. In the past, we, we base ourselves, we base the staging on x-rays, ultrasound, CT scan. But with a PET scan, we can actually stage a patient more accurately. We will be able to know, besides the main areas where we can see on an x-ray or on a CT scan, sometimes we can detect smaller areas which are not detectable on a CT scan. So a patient who has a lung cancer, for example, if you do a CT scan, you may say, look, this patient has a stage 2 lung cancer, and you may say this patient will need to consider surgery for intervention. But if you do a PET scan, and you find that besides the lesion that is seen in the lung, there are now more lymph nodes or small areas of increased uptake in the other lung or in other parts of the body, a surgery may not be necessary you may actually upstage a patient from a stage 2 to a stage 4 and thereby you know, change the way in which you are going to manage this patient. So a PET CT is extremely useful in helping us to stage the cancers. No, it doesn't. I mean basically you are injecting a tiny amount of FDG which is a radioactive substance but it is not harmful to the body. All right. To me, the biggest side effect of a PET scan is really the cost involved. A PET scan in Singapore costs 3,200 Singapore dollars, and that's, that's a big sum of money to pay, especially when you may need to repeat it again to establish whether the treatment is working or not working.